Okay, so now we continue with the the semigroups of matrices with a proposition. Um, let T T E T A for some A in M N complex numbers. Then the function t that goes from r plus to m n complex numbers is differentiable and satisfies the differential equation and differential equation. Once again, is d dt dt equal to a t t t zero i. Okay, this is for t radian equal to zero. Okay. Conversely, um, every differential um, differential function t that uh, satisfies the um, uh, satisfies the differential equation is of the form e t t equal to e t a this is for some a in m and c m and c this is m and c and as the same that we had in the real case the real value case now we will have that a is equal to t dot of zero. Okay. Okay. So let's see that uh, t satisfies um, uh, the differential equation. Okay. So we will use again that uh, t satisfies the uh, functional equation. Okay. So then we will have t of t plus h minus t t over h. Okay, so once again, this will be equal to t h minus i identity h um, multiplied by t t. Okay. Just you see again, we did this before in the real case, it's the same. We took here, we use the t, this is tt multiplied by th, okay? So, this is for all th in r, okay? So, now we need to know that, uh, that the limit when h goes to zero of th minus i over h um, is equal to a. So this will be a multiplied by tt, and that will be the derivative ddt will be equal to ddt tt. This is what we want to see. The limit when h goes to zero of this is a. Okay, so to see that we will take the norm of th minus i over h minus a. Okay, this will be less than equal than the sum of k equal to of uh, h k minus 1, norm of a k, um, 
k factorial. This will be because, okay, like, like we did before, the first of the terms will go with the identity, okay, because we will have all this will be to the zero, to the zero, zero here. So this will be the identity. We take that um, term, we also take of all the terms one of the h, okay, and uh, um, that will be before we uh, put the norm inside the sum and uh, well we want to take also a and a will be when k is equal to 1 this will be 1 okay, the h will go because 1 minus 1 is 0 and uh, we will just have a in the k equals to 1 term so that will be gone also so we will have this series Okay, because after that we have to um, put the norm inside the sum. So we will have this infinite series. So this will be equal to all the series with k equal to 0. That we know that this series will be e norm of h um, uh, absolute value of h norm a. Okay, but in this case we have k minus 1 instead of k, so we are adding an extra k here, so this has to be divided, yeah, an extra h, I want to say. We have to divide this by h, so that here we get rid of the extra h that we have, and we can have this. Um, this is uh, minus 1. Okay, this minus one comes from uh, taking out the first um, the first term of the series, but once again we will have in when k is equal to zero. Okay, we will have uh, that all is one, but here we will have again a h absolute value. Uh, to the minus 1, so we will have to put here an absolute value of h and all these, okay, we can, we won't put some parentheses but this has to be subtracted it will be minus the norm of a because now we have to take also the k equal to 1 um, term so that will be this will be 1 this will be 0 so the h will not appear and okay so the we will have just normal phase okay okay so we have this so what happens when uh, take uh, the limit when h goes to 0 okay so uh, when you take uh, the limit, one can see that uh, this can be all a uh, um, the denominator can be all h absolute value, and uh, then we will have um, an indetermination, but uh, using theorem like a local rule, one can see that this will go to, when h goes to 0, to the norm of a. So if this goes to the norm of a, all of these go to 0. That is what we wanted uh, to see. So that means that this part goes uh, to a. And so it satisfies the differential equation. That is all what we wanted to see. Uh, the part that is the unique can be, and, and the other parts can be proven just the same as the real case. Okay. Okay. So as we did in the case of uh, real numbers, now we will have a theorem um, that uh, t 
Now going from reals to uh, the matrices, complex matrices, okay? T is uh, uh, a continuous function that satisfies um, the functional equation. Then there exists A in M and complex numbers such that um, TT is equal to ETA. This is for all T greater than equal to zero. Okay, so this is once again like we did in uh, the case of uh, real numbers. Now we know that if we have a t that satisfies the functional equation, it has to, or it, it can be written in this way, e t a. It will exist a matrix a in this case, such that you can write t t as this way. Okay, so to prove this, one can make something the, the same thing that we did in the case of a uh, scalar color case and uh, so we have a t that is continuous and uh, t of zero is the identity matrix is invertible then one can have uh, define a, a a matrix if a function b t0 defined as uh, integral of zero t0 of ts ts um, so once again we know that t is continuous okay so uh, once again we will have that um, B is differentiable, okay, we will have B dot T equal to T T and we will have that uh, limit when T goes to zero um, of one over T B T is equal to B dot in R zero and this is equal to T zero again it's a dot and now instead of one it would be the identity matrix okay so um, now we will say that um, for a, a t0 near of uh, 0, okay, um, bt0 uh, will be inverted. And so we can, after this, we can do just the same as we did in the scalar case. It's all the same, and we'll arrive to uh, the result of the theorem. Okay. Okay. So let's call a uh, continuous um, semigroup ETA stable if the limit when t goes to infinity of the norm of ETA is equal to zero. In matrices, uh, uniform and pointwise convergence is the same in, mat in a norm, so this can also be defined in this case as uh, the norm when ETA x um uh, goes to zero okay so about this we have a theorem by Lyapunov that eta is a semi generated by a in m and c then the following are equivalent the semi group is stable okay and b all eigenvalues of a have negative real part 
This is for all lambda in the spectrum.